Welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation.
Hello, 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 hello. This again is R.C. Blakes, and I am thoroughly thrilled and excited about being able to share with you once again. You know, it's such a pleasure for me. People all of the time say to me, uh, thank you for continuing to uh, deliver uh, your content on the various platforms that are available to the general public. Uh, well, you know, it is, it is, I believe, a part of my uh, call in life to really speak to this generation and to find uh, the best means whereby I can communicate whatever God has put in my heart to the masses. I'm always honored that so many of you find value in what I have to deliver. So many preachers and ministers today are you know, invisible and unheard, but I thank God that that is not my testimony. The world really opens its ear to hear what I have to say, and I don't take that lightly. I'm really, really, really grateful. Well, we have a great subject matter here today. As I was pondering and, and praying about what should I discuss with you today, uh, the Spirit of God brought to me, we talked last time we were together, I think it was the last time, we talked about how a queen protects her peace. Well, let's move a little deeper into uh, the mindset of a queen. Not only does she protect her peace, but she also, a major part of that is in the fact that she, um, she chooses a man that heals. And I want to want to just pause and I want you to ponder that she chooses a man that heals. You know, there when you look at society today and you look at the world, I'm adjusting something. So don't bother my looking down right now. Um, you see a generation of men. Not in general, not in general, there are a lot of great men. But there are also a, a great number of guys, in my opinion, that hate women. Their version of masculinity uh, is to hate women, and it almost seems as though it is to destroy women. It's a, it's a strange, strange generation of guys. And we see a lot of women that fall prey to these guys and fall into relationships with men that uh, really have no use for a woman, but to have sex with her, maybe make babies with her and to subjugate her emotionally, to make her a soul-tied slave. And there's nothing more volatile for a woman than opening up her heart to a person before before she's proven them trustworthy. You know, for a woman to, you know, to, to get close to a man or to allow a man to get close to you, it means that you're going to have to reveal your insecurities. And all women, all people have them. Uh, you're going to have to expose your wounds to, uh, to some people. And, um, well, with some people rather to expose yourself, to become, you know, vulnerable and to reveal your insecurities, it will bring out the vulture in them. They'll just simply devour you. For other people or other men, it reveals the healer in them. And so queens don't typically fall into situations where uh, they have lost themselves in the in the hands of men that hurt and devour. Queens typically learn the lessons and apply the wisdom to the next situation. A woman that is not queen conscious, she'll go through it and then she'll repeat the behavior. It'll get deeper. She'll repeat the behavior. And many times she'll waste a lifetime with men that never deserve the conversation. Queens learn the lessons. You know, every, every painful experience that we go through, you can either take, what is it that I say all the time? 
You can either take away from it the pain and the shame, which is what most people take away, which is completely unproductive, or you can take the lessons and the wisdom. Queens always take the lessons and the wisdom, and as they move forward in life, they, they make better choices relative to men. This is why queens ask questions that only kings can answer. It's because it's in the interrogation that a queen gets a chance to determine the character of a man. Questions reveal motives. But the modern woman has been wounded, wounded in ways that pains her so deep it's weighed down in her soul. And so many people ask the question, well, why is it that R.C., why is it that you spend so much time speaking to the empowerment of women? God called me to do it. It is a, it is a passion of mine, and fruit is, is coming forth. I'm seeing so many women's hearts healed. And you see, I've been, I've been this guy. I've been this man, so I know the game. I, I know the damage that we do. I know how we do it. And it is my firm belief that the evidence of a grown man is in how he honors womanhood. When I'm, it's the natural inclination of a man to protect womanhood. It's not the natural inclination of a man to side with men against women. It's the natural inclination of a man to protect womanhood. Any man that's siding with men against women is questionable, in my opinion. So my point is, back to my point, rather, modern women have been wounded in ways that we don't like to discuss. And she's been wounded and broken intentionally. And she's been wounded and broken by men. You know, a lot of times today, as men... We want to talk about how the modern woman is this. She's masculine. She's difficult to deal with. She's not pleasant. She's not kind. And a lot of these things are true many times. But we're, we're constantly looking at the fruit of the modern woman's behavior. But rarely do I hear guys go and deal with the root of the fruit. Why is this fruit hanging from the tree of the modern woman's life. It's because if you go back in her history, she has been so broken by the men in her life, generation after generation after generation, that it has now caused the modern woman to evolve into something that was never intended. She has become so masculinized that now <laughs> the modern man does not even know how to manage her. The modern man does not even know how to take her. And the reality is we produced this. She has been so isolated to her own feelings. She does not always know how to even relate to others. So we have men that we have we have men that break. We have men that heal. Every wise queen conscious woman determines or makes the distinction between the two, and she chooses a man that heals, a man that brings a calm to her soul. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 25 through 28, and listen to what it says. Husbands, you have to understand this. Just because a man is six feet tall, 200 pounds, and is sexually vibrant does not make him a husband. Just because he's a man, it does not make him a husband. A husband is a grown man of certain character. And one of the, one of the primary characteristics of a husband is that he's a healer to the soul of his wife. It says, 
in Ephesians 5, 25 through 28, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Mm, now that's a powerful statement there. I should love Lisa like Christ loved or loves the church even and gave himself for it. Then it says in verse 26 that he might sanctify, set it apart and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Christ was empowered to improve the areas of the church that he thought were not up to par. Husbands should love their wives the same way. You should be in a position to improve the condition of your woman and not just um, humiliate or complain. It says, uh, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Now that's the King James Version I just read. Let me read this same text for you in the Message Version and listen to how it reads. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love, here it is, marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. Powerful text that I think just kind of outlines the characteristics of the kind of man that would be a husband slash the kind of man that brings healing to the soul of a woman. Because a woman's soul is assaulted on a daily basis from social media to uh, entertainment to music to movies to politics to the news. We're constantly seeing things and hearing things that are designed to degrade uh, diminish, miniaturize, debilitate the woman's soul. And so for the queen conscious woman, uh, she keeps a man in her life that heals those wounded areas of her soul. And, and this text outlines the characteristics of this kind of man. Now, I already hear some of you saying, oh, there are no good men. No, you have to understand. The reason you've continued, and I, I need you to hear this, and I know this is going to make some of you angry, but you've got to hear me. The reason you've continued to attract men that break you is because there's something that yet has to be healed and adjusted within you. It's not that the world is filled with all bad men. You have too many women that are testifying they have great husbands. They have great men. And you say, well, they're all taken. Well, we have men growing up every day. We have men that are, are being transformed by the power of God every day. We have some men that may not even know God. Just wake up one day and say, this is a foolish and stupid way that I'm living. I'm going to become a better man. I need to settle down. I need, I need one woman. I need a family. This is happening every day. So when you say there are no great men, that is just your trauma venting itself. That is not reality. So you have to really open your spirit if you're going to really be in a position or posture to receive what God has for you. You can't with your mouth say there are no great men and then in your heart say, God, send me a great man. There's a reason you keep choosing the same kind of men and you're the, you're the one that continues to choose the same kind of men. If you go and fish in the Mississippi River, you're going to get some catfish, I suppose. I'm not a, not a fisherman. And if you keep going there, you're going to keep catching the same thing. 
If you go to the Gulf of Mexico and you go out a little further, you're going to catch some very different stuff. You're going to need a different kind of pole to catch the kind of fish that are out in the Gulf of Mexico. So there are some adjustments that need to be made in you if you continue to catch catfish. Where are you fishing? What are you fishing with? What are you baiting your hook with? How big is your hook? Maybe we need to change where you do what you do. Maybe maybe we need to upgrade your equipment. Maybe we need to upgrade your bait. Maybe we need to upgrade your focus. But let's get into this. I just had to say that because I hear it all the time and it goes through me when I hear women say, there are no great men because it's like you're prophesying unless you just don't want a man. You can't say there are no great men. I mean, you know how many jacked up women there are in the world today? Yeah, well, come on now. Let's just be real. There are a lot of jacked up women in the world today. And, and there are some great men that are looking for wives. But a lot of women are not prepared to be wives. A man can't say all women are this or that and, and, and you know, uh, and think that somehow he's going to develop the kind of energy to attract a wife. So let me push that to the side. Let's get to what I came to talk about. Number one, a man that heals is a giver. He's a giver. Notice the text says in the, in the message version, Jesus' love for the church is marked by giving and not getting. It's always a red flag. It's a red flag on fire when you have a man that is constantly trying to get something from you. You know, a man that's sliding into your life and he's constantly trying to get your body. I mean, come on. Do you have any tact at all? Are you mature? Is this like adolescent games we're playing? You know, we can't even have a conversation. Now you all talk, trying to talk all up under the woman's clothes. And you trying to get, you just met this woman. You trying to get her in the bed already? That's a red flag. You need to X this guy out quickly. He's a getter. He's a taker rather. Or a man that comes into your life and he discovers that you have some measure of success financially or professionally that affords you certain levels of finances. And he's trying to talk you into investing in his business. That's what they say. Invest in my business, my dream. You got to X him off of the list because a man that heals is not a taker. He's a giver. This is why I'm a firm believer that a man that's worth entertaining has a certain work ethic. He may not be a six-figure man. He may not be a seven-figure man, but he's a hard-working guy. He holds his own, and he's an honorable man. He has the desire, come on now, to, to be able to do for his woman. You may make more money than him, but you're not going to out-hustle him. And, and if, if, if it's a man just sitting on his bottom and he's a taker, he's not a man that heals. He's a, he's a son that takes you see, sons take from their moms. Grown men give to their wives. Notice, if, if you look in um, 1 Timothy 5 and 8, it says, if anyone fails to provide, and this is the amplified version, it says, if anyone fails to provide for his own, and especially for those of his own family, he has denied the faith by disregarding its precepts or its laws, its rules, and is worse than an unbeliever who fulfills his obligation in these matters. You get these guys that are in the church that don't want a job and talking about they love Jesus. You know, that's why being, une being equally yoked is about more than both of us loving God and both of us being in the same church. You, what good is it to have a man that's in the same church and loves God, doesn't want a job, doesn't want to provide? The Bible here just said that this man is worse than an unbeliever, a sinner. You know, a, a, an atheist has, an, has enough character to get up and know that if I got a woman, I got to take care of her. And then you have guys in the church that claim to know God and love God, and they don't have enough 
you know, get up and go about themselves to get up and get a job to provide for their own. You're going to make babies that you're not going to get a job to provide for. You're going to let you, you're going to let your woman receive your seed, carry your seed nine months, lay down, risk her life to give birth to your seed, you know, and, and then go back to work to provide financially for your seed while you slide around trying to be a rapid 45 years old. Come on, man. I tell even young people, it's cool to have your dream, but you got to have some real life means. At the same time, while you're pursuing your dream, hit your nine to five and make some money to, to support yourself and those that are connected to you. And your dream will come true. But you got to make certain that you, especially as a man, are getting up and getting it. I was just having this conversation with my uh, 21-year-old son. I think he just turned 21, 21, 22, something like that. You get old about having your, getting your ends up, getting your money right. Because a man that is worth his salt is a giver. He's not coming to take. Come on now. He, he's not coming looking for what he can get out of the situation. He's, he's, he's a giver. A man that, a man that heals is a man that wants to give to you. If a man does not want to give to you, and now when I say that, please keep it, keeping it in balance. That's not, you know, coming from the gold digger mindset, uh, you know, where you, you looking for a man just to get what he got. No, no, that's, we're talking about two healthy individuals that mean one another well. And when things are balanced and proper, a man always has a heart and a mind to give. You know, a man, you, you think about a man being financially generous. It, it is the lowest degree, in my opinion, of a worthy man's offerings. A lot of guys are hung up on, I ain't giving no woman no money and, and I, I'm just not going to do it. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, that's the, that's the lowest degree of generosity of a real man. A real man don't care nothing about no money if if there's something about a woman that interests him. If if he thinks she's uh you know a worthwhile woman, he don't care nothing about no money. That's the least of what he's going to the deposit he's going to make into her life. Any man that's sitting here arguing about should he or should he he gonna try to he gonna hold on to his money. He's not gonna release I'm not gonna now you sleeping with the woman you've been with the woman and you still sitting there talking about you're not going to give her no money. You're not going to do this for her and you're not going to do that for her. This is a clown. This is a childish clown that it, once you get your queen consciousness intact, you're going to get rid of this because this is a clown. Any worthwhile man that brings healing to a woman is a giver. Why is the financial piece so vital? Finances uh, are just an indication of where the heart is. Again, it's the least of a good man's offerings, but it's, it's, it's the physical indication of where the heart is. Matthew 6 and 21 says, for where your treasure or your money is, there will your heart be also. If you're sleeping with a man doing all of this, you know, cleaning a man's clothes and, 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 and basically he's living up in your house, and he's not, he doesn't even honor you enough to bring some money to the table. You know that his heart is not there. His body parts may be there. His, his, his appetite may be there, but his heart is not there. Because when a man loves a woman, not only does he open his heart to her, he opens his wallet and he opens his life to that woman. Because a man that would heal a woman is a man that gives. A man that would break a woman is a man that takes. A man that loves you enough is at least financially generous. And it's important for the man to be a giver because, watch this, listen to this very carefully. Why is it important for me as a man to be a giver? And I thank God that God has blessed me to be a giver. You know, I'm able to bless my wife financially and in every other way that I know I need to. And the only thing I'm not doing is what I don't know about. It's because there's something that happens when a man gives a woman first. A woman 
reproduces and multiplies, watch this, exactly what a man gives her. I gave my wife my seed. She produced children in my likeness. Sometimes too much in my likeness. These people are, sometimes these people are so opinionated and headstrong. Sometimes they're too much in my likeness. They, they don't just look like me in a lot of ways. They think like me. They behave like me. They behave like me so much that they get on my last nerve. But what is the principle? A woman is put in a man's life to reproduce and multiply exactly what he gives her. So if a man is not a giver, he will never employ the woman's greatest uh, grace in his life because a woman reproduces and multiplies what a man gives her. So the man in the relationship between the woman is the initiator. The woman is the multiplier. So when a man is when a man is stingy and tight with his wife or the right woman, what he is effectively doing, he is preventing himself from multiplying. You, you give a woman some groceries, she turns it into a five course meal. You give a woman a house, she turns it into a home. You give you give your you give a woman your life. She turns you into the king that you were always designed to be. That is the role of the woman in a man's life. But a man that is not a giver never empowers his woman to be free enough to release all that God has put in her for him. Because she's the multiplier. Look what Genesis 1, 27, 28 says. So God created man in his own image and image of God created he him. Male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. There would never be multiplication without the woman. See, Adam had seed. But Eve had womb. Seed without soil is nothing. So when God gave Adam woman, Eve, he gave Adam the capacity to multiply and to replenish. But watch this. Eve could not replenish or multiply or reproduce anything that Adam did not first give her. So a man that is empowered to heal a woman's heart is a man that is a giver. A woman can never sustain a relational momentum that the man does not initiate first. You can think that you can step in and you, you're going to make this happen and you're going to make, if, if a man does not give you what is necessary, you're fooling yourself to believe that you can drive the relationship by yourself as a woman. A woman can only go as far in a relationship with a man. She can only go as far as he is willing to give. He has to supply her with what the fuel that is necessary to bring the relationship to where it ultimately is designed to go by God. The woman is always the reflection of the man. And she's the reflection of what he's deposited into the woman. My woman is a reflection of what I've given her. So if I'm calling my woman stupid, it's the seed I've sown into her. If I'm calling my woman ugly, it's the seed I've sown into her. Genesis chapter 2, verses 22 and 23 says, In the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She was the reflection of Adam. And a man that heals is a man that gives. I'd like to believe that my wife is the reflection of my offerings into her life. Now, there are a few things that other than money that a man gives to a woman or to his wife more specifically, well, to a woman that he would consider to be his wife. He gives security. But again, if you can't give something as simple as nickels and dimes, you're not going to be deep enough to give a woman security. 
a man, when a man is really operating in his role in a woman's life, he brings about a security in that woman. He gives that woman his time. If you don't feel secure around a man, safe around a man, if a man is not really giving you his time, if you're on a, uh, you know, a miniaturized schedule, he's, he calls every Wednesday to set things up for Friday, and then you pretty much ghost it until the next Wednesday. Mm -mm. Because a man that heals is a man that gives you his time. And see, you you can't you 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 can't really you know a man when when a man is first trying to get in the bed with you, he'll overdose you on time and everything else you want. But you know, after man has gone a certain distance with you and been with you a certain while, and his 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 pursuit of you is consistent. Oh yeah, you 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 may be working with something right here. He gives the woman security. He gives the woman time. Watch this. Here's a big one. We talked last week about, you know, a woman's peace, how queens protect their peace. She chooses a man that gives her peace, just like we as men need peace. We need women that bring us peace. We don't need the drama. We don't want the drama. We are running from the drama. Women likewise need men that bring them peace. And then he brings, or he gives, letter D, consistency. Because a man that heals is going to bring security. He's going to give you time. He's going to give you peace. And he's going to be consistent. Now, I took too long on that one, actually. Now, number two, too long. Why did I take that long? <sighs> I guess it's just the Baptist preaching me. Number two. A man that heals calms the pain of the past and mends the woman's soul. The text says in Ephesians that Christ, or Christ's love for the church, made the church whole. His love for the church made the church whole. Likewise, a man that loves a woman, a man that can, that is empowered to heal a woman's heart, he feels, he fills rather, he fills the emptiness and he repairs the damage in a woman's soul. He, he makes the woman whole, not whole in the sense that he completes the woman, but whole in the sense that the areas of our heart that were broken and void and hurting, the way this man loves her, he brings healing to all of those areas. And then what happens? We see this woman begin to blossom. Glory to God. When, when a woman has the right kind of man, it, it, fills, it so fills her self-esteem bank. Now, we all know that it's your job to, you know, fill your own self-esteem, but hey, no, no need in me lying. Uh, when a woman has the right man, it's like he, he subsidizes that self-esteem bank to the point that it's just overrunning, you know, because when she has the right man in her life, it's like he brings calm to all of her insecurities, calm to all of her pains. He, he, he really supports her peace. Now, see, this is why, this is why I'm, I'm such a stickler for getting beyond this, um, this thing y'all call type is just not working. It's just not working. It's based on things that are fleeting and changing and superficial and, 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 you know, uh, I, you know, my type, you gotta go deeper. Because you need more than a man that that's six feet tall, you know, uh, you know, six knots in his stomach, you know, uh, six figures and all of this other kind of stuff. You need a man. I'm not telling you you go get a, a man that you can't look at. Of course, we're not going to do that. I mean, he's got to be mildly attractive to you at least. But I promise you, he may not be a 10 on the look scale. He may be a five or a six. But when this man get through loving you 
And this man gets through bringing you peace where other people have brought you trauma and drama. Your love for this man is going to be through the roof because the thing you fail to understand is that attraction grows. The, 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 the lowest form of attraction is physical and visible. Wait until you have some history under your belt with this person. And this person has been consistent in your life. And y'all have gone through some things and come out on the other side together. And you know that this man is your partner. Bae, you're going to have a, you're going to develop a love for that man and attraction to that man, you know, that is going to literally blow your mind. Your sex with that man is going to be on a whole different level. It's because when a man can bring calm to your soul, he can make love to your mind. You see all this other stuff you call in type, that's just making love to your body. When a man can heal your soul, he makes love to your mind. That's a whole different dimension that most shallow women never get to experience. And some of these guys that you take in and putting them in the friend zone because they're two inches shorter than you thought they should be, or they're making $80,000 a year when you say you want a hundred. See, you, 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 you need to do some healing. Something wrong with you. But, but let me get back to the point here. He, he supports her peace. He's a man that heals and calms the pain of the past and he mends the soul. And how does he do this? Letter A, he doesn't judge her. He doesn't judge you. Doesn't matter what you what you've done, where you've come from, what your history is all about. This dude here is bringing healing to your soul because he he doesn't judge you. Listen to what John chapter 8, 10, and 11 says. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, this is a woman that was caught in adultery, and they, these religious guys was bringing her to Jesus to see what Jesus would do with her. She was caught in the very act, meaning they, they saw her having sex, and they wanted to see what Jesus was going to do. And the Bible says when Jesus, when Jesus stooped down, he just started writing on the ground. He didn't say nothing to them. And it says when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw uh, none but the woman, well, he did lift up himself before this. And he says to the people that brought, he says, any of y'all without sin cast the first stone. Then he went to writing again. Then when he lifted up himself and saw none but he and the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. A man that can bring healing to your heart Queens choose men that can heal them is a man that does not judge you. He just loves you for who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It, for him, it's all about where the two of you are going. He doesn't judge you. Let her be. He makes you safe enough to unpack your history. This is a guy that you, he makes you so secure, you can talk about all of the stuff you've gone through. Most women are, are with men that they got to hide their truth because, you know, he's not, he's not, his capacity is not great enough to really manage all that there is to her, or he's not made her feel loved enough for her to feel like she can actually unpack the whole truth and nothing but the truth too. But listen to what John chapter four, uh, you know, woman I love to talk about is that woman at the well Jesus met and had that therapeutic conversation with. And it says here in John chapter four, verses 14 through 16, but whosoever drinks, Jesus is talking to her of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, sir, I give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, go call thy husband and come back. Now, when you keep reading, I just didn't want to read as much. What happens is when Jesus asks her the question, go call your husband and come back, what he's doing is he's opening her heart to be able to unpack her truth. And the woman says, I don't have a hus husband, Jesus. And Jesus said, you've said right. You've had five and the one you're with now is not yours. 
And Jesus loved and embraced this woman in such a way. She said, I perceive that you're a prophet. And when, 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 they, when Jesus got through with this woman, her issue had always been men. She always had problems with men. But when Jesus got through dealing with her and loving her and allowing her to unpack her history, the Bible says she dropped the water pots. She ran into the city and told the men it was unheard of for a woman to have the confidence to tell men anything in that day. But she told the men, come see a man that told me all things. And they followed her. She was whole because she had met a man that made her safe enough to unpack her history. And he unhitched her from it and made her understand that her history could never abort her destiny once she knew who she was. And how does the man do this? Uh, he empowers, he empowers you. He just, he just gives you the ability to believe bigger and to do bigger. Now, number three. A man that heal, heals uses language. He uses language to connect the woman to her beauty. The text says in Ephesians, it says that Christ, his words evokes the beauty of the church. His words evokes the beauty of the church. And I looked at that word evoke, and so I looked for the definition, and it means to bring or recall to the conscious mind. So his words brings to or recalls to the conscious mind the beauty of the church. A man's words, when he is empowered to bring healing to the soul of a woman, a man's words will either inform you of your true beauty or remind you of it. Maybe you once knew who you were, so his words come to remind you of who you were and to, you know, to, to bring you back to your consciousness. Or maybe you've never known, so his words come to inform you of who you are. He uses his words to bring you back to consciousness. He makes you feel beautiful with his words. He, he makes you see yourself differently because a lot of times we have one view of ourselves internally. The world gives us an entirely different view. But when you have the right man in your life or the right partner in your life and they give you their perspective of you, it helps you to see yourself differently. It helps you to, you know, rid yourself of all of the toxic opinions of the world. It helps you to recalibrate even your inner thoughts about you. And the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You have to be certain to pay very close attention to the kind of language a man uses with you. Because language is death or life, and most men use language intentionally. If a man is constantly saying things that bring you down and bring you low and bring you into depression and causes you to have a low self view, that if he's doing that constantly, that's not by mistake, that's intentional. You're dealing probably with a narcissist that is intentionally, a malignant narcissist that is intentionally breaking you down to manage your life. Wicked men use intentional language to break your spirit. A good man uses intentional language to repair you. Proverbs 12 and 18 in the New International Version reads like this. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the language of the wise brings healing. Now, let's see. Number four, man that heals inspires the woman to be her best. I took too long on number one. A man that heals inspires the woman to be her best. You don't have to, you don't, in other words, he doesn't make you feel like, what well, well, the text says of Jesus and his love for the church, it says everything he does and says is to bring the best out 
of the church. This is how Christ loved the church. Everything he does and says is to bring the best out of the church. The right man always seeks to maximize his woman. He is never miniaturizing her. If you're in a relationship with a man and you're feeling like, well, I have to dumb myself down so he can be happy with me. Any man you have to dumb yourself down for is not enough man for you. Any man that makes you feel like, okay, you need to forget about that, forget about this major goal. In other words, divorce yourself from your individuality. Divorce yourself from you so that we can be us. And he, here you go. Divorce yourself from you so that we can be us, but there is no us without you. If you lose your individuality, you, you lack what is necessary to come together with a man to create a, a real, uh, authentic and healthy union. So the right man always seeks to maximize his woman and never to miniaturize her. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses seven and eight, New International Version again says, a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from the woman, but the woman from the man. Watch this. The greater a man's woman, the greater the man. The greatest evidence of a great man is his woman. The Proverbs 31 woman's husband maximized her. He took pleasure in her actualization. He 